Howdy YouTube, Zipdisk here, bringing you yet another part of my multi-part series, Defending the Indefensible. Today we're going to be covering the last of the mainline KISS players figures. That being Hot Rodimus, or Hot Rod, or Rodimus, or whatever you want to call him. And his partner, Xiao Xiao Li. Hot Rod is an interesting character in the story, but I'm going to start with Xiao Xiao because she goes back to before Hot Rod shows up in the series. Xiao Xiao! He's a little Chinese girl, as you can tell. She's dressed in a little Chinese dress with a thing. She's eating a little steamed pork bun. The accessory she comes with is a little pork bun steamer. Bamboo pork bun steamer with a tiny little pork bun molded in. It's kind of an odd accessory and doesn't really do anything, doesn't interact with anything, but there it is. Xiao Xiao's an interesting character. She is the daughter of Chinese immigrants to New York who ran a Chinese restaurant. While in New York, she met Marissa Fairborn, who I've previously covered under the, Con the Convoy slash Optimus Prime video. They became best friends, hung out with each other all the time. Um, she doesn't speak very good English or perfect Japanese because she speaks Chinese, which also is partially apparently why she's got a padlock collar around her neck because her parents are freaks. She was one of the earlier KISS players, went to Japan, hooked up with uh, Commander Mao, and worked for a long time as the partner of Otto Ruper Ne04, which later became the partner of Atari Hitnohori, or however you say her name. Xiao Xiao was the partner at the battle where they met Atari, but she overstayed her ability to fuse with her partner and was rejected. Atari, on the other hand, ended up kissing the, the uh, uh, Otto Ruper and became its partner. Therefore, Xiao Xiao was surplus to ne necessity at the time and was taken by Commander Ramao and sealed inside the basement of the EDC in Japan where she was basically tied naked inside of a tube with a severed Legion head above her that was going to eat her. Because the legions, in their infinite hunger, desire nothing more than the flesh of KISS players who are infected with the very same Galvatron cells that gave them life. They're all trying to eat everything that contains the Galvatron cells to reunite Galvatron and bring him back to full life. Okay, that's Xiao Xiao for now. Now, she is left inside the tube and rescued by Rodimus when Rodimus comes crashing to Earth through the anti-electron barrier which has been erected around the Earth to keep the Transformers out. He is severely injured in the process, and knowing about her own Kiss Player's power, she kisses him in a desperate last attempt and reformats him from the car he was into a Ford GT. Now, bit on the Ford GT. Ford GT is an interesting car. Much like the Dodge Ram SRT-10 pickup truck that Optimus Prime is, this car is no longer in production. It was only produced from 03 to 06. And technically, I think it's a GT90. Because it's based on a car from the 60s called the just the GT... Well, it was the GT40. Uh, about this time, Ford was trying to come up with ways to uh, rebrand uh, themselves and bring out a lot of their classic models in new incarnations. And this was one of them. I think it's a beautiful car. It's a great car mode. It really works for Rodimus. I mean, look at this. It's got all kinds of... Look, look at those detailed seats on the inside. It's got a detailed steering wheel. I'll show you the insides in a bit. On the back, it even has a license plate that if you can read that... I don't think you can. has a little bitty Autobot symbol and says Hot Rodimus on the license plate. I don't know any state that allows you to have that many characters in your license plate, though. So he kind of stick out like a sore thumb. Nicely detailed. It's even got a little silver gas cap thing right here on the front. Now, the thing about the Ford GT is it's not a front-engine, it's not a rear-engine car, it's a mid-engine vehicle. In fact, I can show you the engine if I pull up this back section, which is, I guess, how you access the engine in one of these cars. See, there is the engine, right back there. Not toward, right in the rear, but in the middle, more or less. Adds for a bit of a different weight distribution to a car, and I think helps with the handling, but I'm not exactly positive. I'm not entirely a car guy, I just know a lot about, uh, I just know a bit about cars now from watching Top Gear, which is a fantastic show, you should check it out, uh, BBC America, or if you live in the UK, or a uh, country associated with the UK, probably just the BBC will be covering it. 
Great car show, if you're into cars. Doors open on this, of course. And you can see the inside nicely detailed. I mean, you've got dials and everything in there, even a shifting lever. I mean, that is a greatly detailed interior. I really like this. I like the whole concept of the alternators line, and I like the vinyl tech, and I love the Kiss players. It's just so much character packed into each one of these. And unlike the other two that I've got, the, uh, I can actually put Xiao Xiao in the front seat of this. I can't really do it with the uh, Optimus because it's impossible to transform back into a truck. And I can't do it with the uh, Atari and Auto Ripper because she just doesn't fit behind the seat, so she has to ride in the, the passengers. But for Xiao Xiao, she actually does fit right there. You can close the door, and there she is, inside of Rodimus. Now, Rodimus and Xiao Xiao end up wandering the countryside of Japan as fugitives. She's wanted by the EDC because she's a KISS player who's on the run, and he's wanted by the EDC because he's a Transformer on Earth who shouldn't be there. They're also in opposition of Optimus Prime because Rodimus doesn't believe it's actually Rodimus, uh, Optimus Prime. He thinks it's someone totally different. He thinks it's some sort of horrible abomination. And Xiao Xiao doesn't like Optimus Prime because he's, he's, he's uh, bleh, sorry, monopolizing all of Marissa's time with, and she really wants to get back to, to her friendship with Marissa. Right, so basically, they're the bad boy and bad girl of the series, running around, causing trouble, fighting the legions, fighting Optimus, fighting the EDC. They're basically fighting everybody. Um, and, and they're in a similar situation to Optimus, but they just cannot bring themselves to accept that it's Optimus and not some sort of horrible uh, legion version of him or some Galvatron spawned abomination, which in some ways he actually is. Uh, Rodimus, of course, is hot-headed. He's given up the Matrix at this point, mainly because he feels guilty about what happened with Galvatron crashing into De Tokyo after, the, after Galvatron was thrown out of Unicron at the end of the movie. The 1986 movie, that is. So he's given up the Matrix and come to Earth, even though he knows there's an anti-electron barrier around the Earth that could possibly kill him. He has got to get to Earth, got to stop what's going on, make amends for the destruction of Tokyo. He, he's basically there on a quest for penance. He's looking for inner peace. He's looking for forgiveness. But he gets distracted by the whole Kiss Players battle and the whole thing with the Galvatron cells. He gets totally sidetracked. And part of that's because he's been infected with the Galvatron cells as well when Xiao Xiao kissed him. So much like Prime, he's beginning to have nightmares and horrible, horrible uh, afflictions with just not being able to focus on things. It's not as bad as Prime, though, since Prime has no actual spark at this point because he's been killed. Rodimus still has his original spark, so he's still more or less himself for longer than Optimus is. I'll be covering the end of the series in another video. But for now, I just wanted to cover Rodimus in his car mode. I will be back with another video in a little while covering Rodimus in his robot mode, and explaining why he comes with a fishing rod. That's my next video, though, and I'll be covering less of the background and more of the actual figure in the next review. Anyway, this has been me with Rodimus. Um, I also don't have the box for this one. It's the only one I didn't get boxed. It's also the first figure I got, and my favorite in the entire line, just because I like the figure, I like the character who comes with it. Another thing, Xiao Xiao, unlike any of all the other figures, has no alternate parts. She doesn't have any alternate arms, she doesn't have any alternate legs, nothing. She is what you see. She's a seated girl chewing on a meat on a pork bun. That's it. I don't care though, I think she looks cute. I think she looks good behind the wheel of this car. And I really think this is a coherently wonderful car mode. I actually like displaying him in car mode a lot. I mean I love his robot mode too, but we'll get to that in the next video. This is Zipdisk, hoping to see you in a little bit. Have a great day. Bye.